Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though. Trouble. But when I walk into the commissioner's office, I don't realize that this assignment's going to wind up with my getting shot at just for trying to turn off a radio program. Morning, Commissioner. Ruth said you had an assignment for me. I do, Steve. Ever thought of getting into radio? Oh, me? I should say not. Why? You holding auditions or something? I want you to get into the business just long enough to get somebody else out of it. Oh. I'm not sure. Now, look. You look, Steve, at this map of the Balkan area. This country here. That's about the only friendly country left in that area, isn't it? At the rate things are going, it may not be friendly for much longer. Oh, Steve, there's an outlaw broadcasting station somewhere in that country. The man who's doing the broadcasting is filling the air with a choice assortment of lies and propaganda. What about? About our country and theirs. The result has been to put a strain on our relations with them and to set up internal tensions over there which are, in effect, tearing the country apart. Is there by any chance an election coming up over there soon? Yes. Steve, we know who's behind this broadcaster, all right. But what we've got to do is to stop him. Well, it seems to me that this is a matter for the Balkan country to handle. What's it got to do with us? We think the broadcasting is being done by an American. What? The government over there has asked our cooperation. I see. Obviously, they haven't been able to locate this broadcasting station, eh? No, it's undoubtedly a mobile one. Look, I wonder if maybe an old trick isn't being used. What do you mean? Well, making it sound like the broadcast is coming from a certain country when actually it's across the border in another country. No, they've assured me that the broadcast is actually originating from inside the country, Steve. Uh The items which the broadcaster comments on sometimes are so recent that he'd have to be inside the country to know about them. I see. Well, whom do I work with over there? A man named Prebo, one of their intelligence agents. He's waiting for you in their capital right now. Well, Steve, get over there. Work with Prebo. Locate this outlaw broadcaster and put him out of business once and for all. Well, I see it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. National Broadcasting Company is presenting Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy in the role of Steve Mitchell, colorful, two-fisted government agent. At all those places of the world where danger and intrigue walk hand in hand, there you will find Steve Mitchell on another Dangerous Assignment. Sure, I've got my assignment. Just a little matter of dropping into a Balkan country and finding an outlaw broadcaster nobody's been able to locate so far and then putting him out of business. And I don't doubt that somewhere along the line I'll run up against somebody who'll be trying to do likewise to me. It's Friday evening when my plane lands in the capital and I head for their intelligence office and Agent Prebo. He takes me into the radio room where a little gent is sitting by a receiver. Uh, this is Kovac, head of our radio division, Mr. Mitchell. Kovac? I am honored, Mr. Mitchell. You uh, expecting this outlaw broadcaster to come on the air tonight, Prevo? Yes, in but a few minutes. As you see, we have a radio direction finder here. I also have one 30 miles northwest of here, and a third one 20 miles to the east. That way you can get a fix on him, huh, Kovac? Yes. Unfortunately, this procedure has done us no good in the past. Each time we race to the position, Kovac and his men have plotted on the map. Yeah? No. What do you mean? Nobody is there when we arrive. Ah, he must have his transmitter mounted in a car or a truck. Any idea who the guy is? Well, our language experts tell us he is a Native American. Probably from your Middle West. At the list I gave you, Priva, the one listing American expatriates. Oh, yes. Here it is, Mitchell. I have studied it over and found three names which also appear on a list of tourist visas which have been granted during the past six months. So, we know those three men have been in this country recently. Okay, who are they? The first one is a William Teal. Teal. Let's see what I've got on his background. Here we are. William Teal, ex-newspaper political writer with a criminal record in the States, wanted for extortion, illegal possession of firearms, violation of the Narcotics Act. <laughs> you know, this sounds like a real sweet kid. Who's next on your list? A Carl Fenton. Fenton. Yeah. Former professor. Great cause joiner. The save the world type, I guess. Who's the third? 
Arnold Chris. I don't even have to look him up. He's been in our hair for years. How do you mean? Professional agitator. Makes his living that way, I guess. Always trying to get himself arrested so he can be a big, fat martyr. Mm, I see. So our boy could be one of those three. Teal, Fenton, Twist. Good evening, my long-suffering and much-oppressed friends. There he is, Prebo. This is the voice of truth. I'll bet. Well, let's take a look at the day's news. See, Kovac is receiving no, reports from the other know. direction finders the over United his earphones. Nations. He's plotting their lines uh, on the map. I should say the disunited nations are blundering along under the control of old Uncle Moneybags, who... There. You get his position already, Kovac? Yes. As you see, I have added my own line to the map and plotted the fix. Here you are. Okay, let's go, Prebo. We should almost be there, Mitchell. According to the map, the broadcast came from this field we are approaching. I see lights on the other side of the field, Prebo. Yes, our other units are approaching along the other road. We will have the field completely surrounded. Good. Brace yourself. I'm going to turn off the road now. Okay. Here, I'll sweep the field with the spotlight and... Hey, stop the car, Prebo. Uh, empty. The whole field is empty. Well, I'll be... Uh, no cover for anyone to hide in, either. This is what happens to us every time, Mitchell. Eh, this guy must be part gopher. Okay, might as well get back to headquarters. What time is it, Mitchell? Ten minutes to midnight. You say this gent has another broadcast right at midnight? Usually. Well, we might as well try again. Kovac's still on duty? Yes. See, he and his daughter are waiting for us in front of the building. What luck did you have, Prebo? The usual, Kovac. Not a trace of him. Mm, I do not understand it. Nor do I. Uh, oh, I do not believe Mitchell has met your daughter. I beg your pardon. This is Anna, Mr. Mitchell. Hello, Anna. I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Mitchell. I hope you will be able to help locate this outlaw broadcaster. He's certainly causing a lot of trouble for us all. Yeah. Kovac, you'd be able to tell if he was broadcasting from a plane, wouldn't you? Oh, yes. Our radar stations would pick up the plane at once. Well, let us go up to headquarters, hmm? Are you uh, coming with us, Kovac? I will be up in time for the next broadcast. Very well. After you, Mitchell. Thanks. Let's see. What floor is that again? Eight. The top button. Okay. You know, this must be getting pretty monotonous for you, Prebo, chasing after this guy and winding up with a handful of air each time. Yes, I'd like very much to get my hands on him. He's doing the cause of democracy in my country a great deal of harm. Of course, I am certain our neighbors across the border to the east are enjoying the whole affair hugely. I don't doubt it. Hey, what's the matter with the elevator? It quit. But we are only halfway up to the top. Halfway between the fourth and fifth floor, to be exact. I'll try the button. Mm -hmm. Nothing. This is the emergency signal button here, huh? Yes. I'll try that. Dead. All the power must be off. Well, let's see if we can bring any help. Hey, anybody around? I don't know if that will help or not, Mitchell. Huh? At this hour of the night, the building is deserted except for the night watchman, and there is no telling which section of the building he might be in. Well, you got any better ideas? No. Well, then oil up your tonsils and join me. Maybe we can raise... What's the matter? Listen... Hear anything? Yes. What is it? I don't know. I'm trying to peg it. Sort of a rasping metallic sound, and it's coming from somewhere above us in the elevator shaft by the sound of it. Yes. Strange. The elevator cage is vibrating slightly. Yeah. Hey, wait. What is it? If I can climb up the side of the cage a little. There. What are you doing? Uh, Wedge shut. Oh, fine. Look, Prevo. Somehow we've got to get this trap door on top of the cage open before it's too late. Too late? What do you mean? I just figured out what that sound over us is. It's a hacksaw. A ha- yes, you are right. Mitchell, somebody is trying to saw the elevator cable in two. That's right, Prevo. If we don't figure a way out of this rat trap fast, we'll be taking a one-way trip to the basement. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Now back to Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Hey, 
The trap door. Is it moving any? No. Still stuck tight. I'll have to think of something else. Well, perhaps if we were... Just a minute. I think I got it. Mitchell, what are you doing? It looks as if you're trying to hang from the side of the cage by your hands, upside down. That's just what I am doing. If I can hold on, maybe I can do some good with my feet. Here, I'll help support your shoulders. Okay. Now. Not yet. It's coming. There. Mitchell, you forced it open. Yeah, here. Let me down. Mitchell, I can see a figure up there sawing at the cable. Wait. Now he's looking down at us. Got your gun? Yes, right here. Did you get him? I don't know. He dove out of sight. Hey, the cage sagged a little just then. Come on. I'll pull you up after me. Okay. Give me a hand. Very well. Up you come. Look, we can climb onto the fifth floor landing from here on top of the cage. Wait, I'll slide the doors open. There. Mitchell, the cable, it's starting to give way. Dive for the landing. There. There goes the cage. We pound down the stairs, but our boy has done a one-flight lead on us. By the time we get to the ground floor, he's nowhere in sight. Kovac and his daughter, Anna, are still standing in front of the building. Kovac! Kovac! Did a man come out of the building? Yes, but a few seconds ago. There he is, just rounding the corner. Oh! Oh! Father, he shot you. You're bleeding. He darted out of sight around the corner, Mitchell. Hurry. When we get around the corner of the building, the guy's gone. We search the area, but he's done a good job of dropping out of sight. Finally, we get back to Kovac and Anna in front of the building. She's dabbing at his sleeve with her handkerchief. There, I think the bleeding is almost stopped now, Father. You see, Anna, it was not as bad as we thought. Oh, oh you were very fortunate, Kovac. It's only a nick in the forearm. Yes. Come, we had better go upstairs, gentlemen. The outlaw broadcast will be starting any minute, and we must be ready to start tracking. I'll arrange a relief for you, Kovac. Why? I am perfectly capable of handling it, Primo. Yes, but your arm. A, a scratch, nothing more. Well, even so, maybe you better let your daughter take you home and sort of... I insist on being allowed to perform my duties. But, no, well, okay, Kovac, sure. Kovac's daughter, Anna, starts to leave, and while he's saying goodbye to her, I take Primo off to one side and try out a wild idea on him. Only, all of a sudden, he doesn't think it's so wild. Then, Kovac joins us again, and we head upstairs to the intelligence headquarters. Pretty soon, the outlaw broadcaster comes on the air, and Kovac starts tracking. He gets the other two reports over his earphones and draws the lines. Then, he flips off the receiver and hands Primo a map. Here you are, Primo. This is where you got him plotted, huh? Yes, uh, right there where the three lines intersect. If you hurry, perhaps this time you'll not get away. Yeah. But why do you not get started? He, he may escape again if you delay. That's right, Kovac. I, I do, do not understand. Pribo, what is the meaning of this? Why do you and Mitchell just stand there and look at me like that? Your boy ought to be finished by now, Pribo, huh? Yes, he is in the next room. Uh, uh, here he is now. You have the position plotted on your map? Yes, sir. Here you are. What? What is this all about? That's what we'd like to know, Kovac. Uh -huh. As you see, Mitchell, there is quite a discrepancy in the two locations. You, you had another man plot the broadcast? And located on the map. It is quite a distance away from the location you gave us. Uh, this other location is wrong. Look, Kovac, quit stalling. I figured you were a little too eager to stay on duty a few minutes ago, and it started me thinking... One very good reason for not finding this broadcaster is that you've been plotting the location wrong on purpose. No. It is useless, Kovac. I have the proof right here in my hand. Why have you been doing it, Kovac? According to Prevo, you've always been a pretty loyal citizen. Yes. It is true. I have been giving false locations, but I had no choice. You, you must believe me, I had no choice. What do you mean? My son. Your son? But our language experts assured us the broadcaster is in America. Oh, no, no, you do not understand. The country across the border from here, they are the ones who are behind this broadcaster. What's that got to do with it? My son lives in that country. He's a shopkeeper. When this broadcasting first started, agents from that country visited me secretly and told me they would kill my son unless I agreed to help them. I, I had no choice. So you've been giving phony locations right from the start, huh? Yes. But now we have a correct position on him for the first time. Come, Mitchell. Perhaps our hunting luck is due to improve at last. 
Reeve, when I head for the location this other man had plotted for us, it's a sort of a square or plaza near the edge of the city. We get there, stop the car, get out and take a good look around. Well, that van is nowhere in sight. It sure isn't. Mitchell, I do not understand it. This time we are certain we had the right location. He must have gotten some kind of a warning. But how? I don't know, unless... Hey, wait. Hmm? There's your answer, Freebo. Look in that little shop with her back to us. Come on. What? Why, that is Kovac's daughter, Anna. Yeah. Mitchell, she sees us now. Just hold it where you are, Anna. Well, it is Mr. Mitchell and Freebo. Yeah, a big surprise meeting us here, isn't it? Well, of course, I... Save it, Anna. You tipped off the broadcaster that we were on our way here, didn't you? I I don't know what you're talking about. Your father has already confessed to his part in this, Anna. He he confessed? Why did you warn the broadcaster? When father was wounded, he was afraid he would not be able to do the plotting on the map. So he told me to come here to the square and warn the man who does the broadcasting. I was afraid of what they would do to my brother if this man was caught. Well, you've really been a big help to us, Anna. By now, the gent we're after has probably slipped across the border. If he continues his broadcasting from that country, we will be powerless to stop him. I'm sorry, Mr. Mitchell. Oh, that fixes everything. If there is anything I can do to make amends... You uh, got a look at this guy, didn't you? Yes, of course. Here, I've got three pictures. Here, take a look. See if you recognize any of them. All right. No. No. Yes, yes, this is the man. William Teal. Hmm. He's the one with the criminal record. Yeah, but that doesn't help if we can't lay our hands on him. Perhaps you can. Huh? I can arrange for you to slip across the border. Across the border? Yes, and then you would be on your own. Surely they would not know where you got your information. That way my brother would not be in danger. and Perhaps that would make up for what father and I felt we had to do. Okay, that's a deal. Mitchell, I strongly advise you think this over. I just did. I will make all the arrangements, Mr. Mitchell. In one hour, the person who is to take you across the border will pick you up at this corner in an automobile. Okay, Anna, I'll be here. Mr. Mitchell, eh? we know that Anna has not been trustworthy in the past. How do you know you can trust her now? I don't, but I'll find out in about an hour. Rebo leaves, still shaking his head, and I wait out the hour. Right on the dot, a car swings around the corner and pulls into the curb. The door opens, and I hop aboard. Okay, let's... Hey, Anna. Yes, Steve. You mean you're the one who's going to take me across the border? Yes. We will drive to a deserted stretch of the border, hide the car, cross on foot, and then make our way to the city where my brother's shop is. Why didn't you tell us an hour ago that you were going to be my guide? I knew Prebo did not trust me. I see. Steve... You trust me, don't you? I'll let you know a little later, Anna. We are almost at the border, Steve. You said this was a deserted stretch. You weren't kidding, Anna. See, here is the barbed wire fence. Yeah. We didn't make it here any too soon. Be light in an hour, looks like. Okay, I'll hold the strands apart while you... What is it? Quiet. Listen. Somebody coming. Wait. It's their border patrol. Quick, over in these bushes. There. This ought to screen us. Looks like this stretch of the border wasn't so deserted after all. I don't understand it, Steve. There are usually no patrols at all here. Quiet. Here they come. Hey, watch it. Oh. Close. You're telling me. What an unlucky accident, my breaking the twig when I did. You're sure it was an accident? Of course. What do you mean? Let it go for now. Come on. They're out of hearing now. Let's go. We crawl through the fence and take the back roads to the city. It's a few minutes past noon when we get to the shop of Anna's brother, a gent named Boris. He hustles us into the back room and Anna fills him in on the deal. So, this explains why I have been watched and spied upon constantly these last few months. I've been a virtual prisoner and did not know it. Yes. If Father had helped Prebo track down this outlaw broadcaster, this William mm-hmm. Teal, you would have been killed, Boris. And now you say that uh, Teal is back in this country? Yeah. yeah. Mind if I use your radio there? Of course not. You think Teal will continue his broadcast? We'll soon find out. 
If he runs through the schedule, he should be on the air right now. Good afternoon, my oppressed friend. There he is. Yeah. This is the voice of truth. I am still in your midst. In spite of any lies, you may hear that I have been driven from your country. I will never leave you until my words of truth have... But Steve, I don't understand. I know that he'll cross the border. Sure he did, but he's trying to make it sound like he's still in your country. He's probably broadcasting from the radio station right here in this city. You know where it is, Boris? Yes, come. I will take you there. There is the radio station just ahead. But Steve, look, in the alley, that moving van parked there. Yeah, that the truck deal was broadcasting from across the border? Yes. And he must be here, all right. Okay, pull up in front of the building. In front? Yeah, yeah, right here. Very well, but you surely are not going to walk in the front door. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Steve, have you gone crazy? There are guards at the front entrance. How are you going to get in? With this. Some folded sheets of paper? I don't understand. Look, if you saw somebody walk into a radio station with these in his hand, what would you think they'd look like? Why, uh, a radio script, I suppose. That's right. You are going to pretend you are working here? I'm going to make like I own the joint. You two pull around into the alley. Boris, see if you can get that truck started. I'll meet you out there in about five minutes, I hope. Ever stick your head into a lion's mouth? That's just how I feel as I saunter casually up to the front entrance with my script under my arm. But the gag works. The guards ignore me. Inside, I start down the hall trying to act like I know where I'm going and just hoping I don't open the wrong door and end up in the broom closet. Then I spot a row of studios at the end of the hall, each with a glass window inside the third one. I spot Teal. Just signing off, I wait until he comes out into the hall, and then I ease up to him. Uh, What? Start walking, Teal. What, What is this? Who are you? My name's Mitchell. I've come a long way to pick you up, all the way from the States. The States? <laughs> and you're going to pick me up, huh? That's the general idea. We're going out the side door. Oh, are we? Well, suppose I don't want to. This gun in my pocket says you will. Uh, look, you, you can't get away with this, Mitchell. It's worth a try, Teal. Where do you think you're going to take me? Back to the States, eventually. Little matter of treason, to say nothing of a criminal record. You're out of your mind if you think you can get me back to the States. I'm among friends here. They'll never sign any extradition papers. I know. But the country across the border will. They've been trying to get you out of their hair for months. But I'm not there now. I'm safe here. That's funny. I'd have sworn I heard you say in your broadcast just a few minutes ago that you were still in that other country. Well, now, now look, Mitchell, if you think you're going to pull anything like that on me, you... That's just what I do think. Now move. Where are we going? Out that side door. Well, then what? I'll let you know as soon as I figure it out. Open the door. Steve, over here. Okay. Good. Inside, Steele. Steve, watch out. A guard behind you. Guard, help! I've got him. Now, get in, Teal. All right. Okay, you drive, Teal. Boris, you and Anna stay in the back, out of sight. But why do we take this moving van, Steve? We will be conspicuous. If we can get to the border before they figure out where we're heading, we've got a chance. Okay, Teal, step on it. That's the border up ahead, Mitchell. That bridge across the river. This is the spot where you crossed into the other country before? Yes, that's right. I understand now, Steve. You're going to pretend that you and Teal are crossing the border to do some more broadcasting. That's right. You and Boris stay out of sight back there. All right. And Teal, I'm still holding that gun on you in my pocket. All right. They're waiting us to stop at this end of the bridge. Okay. Huh. Looks like they've got this end of the bridge pretty well boarded up. Oh, it's just a gate. Who's that guy walking towards us? It's the captain of the guards. The other side of the river is across the border, huh? Yeah. Okay. As soon as the guard's through with us, just take the van across nice and easy and just don't try to get tricky with him. Well, well, it's Mr. Thiel. Hello, Captain. It has been a long time since I've seen you. Uh, and I do not believe I have met your friend. I'm uh, Thiel's new assistant. I see. But uh, what are you doing here, Mr. Thiel? Well, we, we want to get across the border and do some more broadcasting. But surely you are joking. What do you mean? Well... Mr. Teal, you know that the border is closed at this bridge. Oh, pretty forgetful of you, wasn't it, Teal? Well, I... Captain... Wait. Guard running out of the shack towards us. Must have gotten a phone message. Wait, what is this all about? Sorry, Captain. We're leaving. Step on the gas, Teal. We're going to crash that barricade on the bridge. I I won't do it. Okay, I will. My foot! Anna, brace yourself. Oh, we made it, Steve. Now if we can just 
must be going to the other end of the bridge. Teal, get your foot off the brakes. No, no, I'm getting out. Teal. Say, he's diving into the river. Morris, get this truck across the bridge. I'm going after Teal. <laughs> Feet from Teal was trying to swim back to his pals. I grab him, try to maneuver him to the other side. The bullets start topping in the water all around us. I dive under, grab his legs, and pull him down with me. I wait until he's hard up for breath, and then I release him suddenly. We both surface fast, and just as he's gasping for air, I let him have it. He conks out, I drag him under the bridge with me out of range of the border guards. I work him across to the other bank where Boris and Anna are waiting for me. Steve, are you all right? Yeah, here. I will help you with Teal. Just sit down on the bank while I get my wind. Oh, brother. I'd sure hate to do that every day. Well, we are all safe now, Steve. Uh, all except Teal. He will not be doing any more broadcasting, huh? That's right. You might say there's no future for him in radio. Matter of fact, there's no future for him, period. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell with Herb Butterfield as the commissioner, is written by Bob Reif and Adrian Jando, with music by Robert Armbruster, and is produced and directed by Bill Karn. Others in the cast were Paul Fries, Shep Mencken, Stacey Harris, Gene Bates, Tim Graham, and Don Diamond. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.